heartbeat so that I can hardly speak. And I seek to find the happiness I seek when we're out together dancing cheek to cheek. I've been around movie theaters all my life because my, my dad started in the movie business when he was uh, about 10 or 12. It was in about 1922. So I was raised in the theater family. So I've always been around theaters. So I wouldn't know any other life, I guess. But uh, I can remember riding with a spare projector in the back seat with me lots of times when I was little. So, my brother and I were pretty much raised here. This, this driving is more like home than any place I know. We've been here 58 years. We've, we've lived in Calvert here for 57 years. The driving was open one year before we moved here built in 1953 and we, we moved here in 1954 so uh, we've been around it all our lives we've, we've both had other jobs you know to make a living it's hard to make a living out of driving so you really been the driving business these days you need a day job to support your driving habit because <laughs> it's, it's really tough to make a, a living for a family, you know, six months out of the year, because in the winter it's just closed up and uh, you can't make any money out of it in the winter time. The projectors that we're running now are the third the actual projector head that does the film part. It's the third set that's been in there, and we we bought them from a closed drive-in in Paducah. It's called the Starlight Drive-In. And uh, I helped my dad rebuild them in 1960, and we're still running those projectors. They, we, we work on them occasionally when they need some maintenance work, but they're, they're really well made and mainly keep them clean and oil is the main thing. Occasionally we have to change a part on them. They haven't had a complete overhaul since 1960. Just partial. I've helped my dad do just about everything that it takes to keep it running. Uh, anywhere from cleaning up the paper and mowing to climbing up to the top of that screen and working. A lot of kids have got the first job working here. I, I meet grown people that I can remember when they worked here when they were teenagers. As far as the structures, the box office is the only building that's original. The box office and the speaker poles are original. The old building sat right here, and we tore it down and built the new building in 2007. This is the lamp house that makes the light for the picture. And uh, this pedestal is original to 1953. That's the only part of the projector that had been changed. This is the projector head, this part right here. And then this is the sound head down here. For the sound reproduced in this part. But the uh, way the projector works, film is fed down through the, the sprockets and uh, when it comes in front of the light, the film stops and the light comes on. And then when the projector moves the film down another frame, the light is turned off and it moves to the next frame and then the light comes on. And it does that 24 times a second. And uh, when you look in there, the picture is upside down in here. When the film comes off the reel, it's upside down, and the lens turns it right side up. 
and the soundtrack is on the operator side of the film. On the soundtrack will be on this side of the film. This is Zookeeper. I'm going to get a picture of the soundtrack. All this is going to change. They're going to come out with, well, they've already come out with digital projectors, but uh, eventually the film will be obsolete and won't be making any more film. So this, this little, little blue line on this side is the soundtrack. I don't know if you can get a picture of that or not. That blue line, those little squiggly lines varies the light uh, and makes the uh, variations for the sound. The whole movie is on this one reel. It's bigger than I expected it to be. Well, it comes on smaller reels like those on the wall over there. Each film, each reel, like it, this is, is H1, it's the head of Zookeeper, first reel. And each reel will have the number of the reel and the, and the name of the movie. And, and the, the other end of the reel, the other end of the film on that reel, where the foot will be a F or foot of that reel number. So when they're shipped in, they have a head and a foot leader. And Mike takes a, all of those off. They usually come just taped on with masking tape because everybody has to take them off and splice them all together in the right order. We run the movie, and then when it's finished, he has to tape or undo the splices and tape the leaders and footers back on the, each reel. To make sure he's got them on the right reel. And put them back in the film case and ship them out. When the movie gets through running, like on some movies, like when we finish running on Sunday, it'll go out of here on Monday morning. Uh, years ago, with a company. We did all the film hauling, it's called Film Transit. And they've specialized in just hauled movie film. And they've done away with that company and now. They started a couple of other companies, but uh, they have been discontinued. It all comes by UPS now. But the, after the film goes through, it winds up on the lower reel and then at the end of the movie, we wind it back up on the top. And most theaters have what's called a platter and the big reel is horizontal. And they can have more than one movie on the platter. It has layers yeah. and uh, it's a different system completely. But the platter, the disadvantage for a drive-in is if the, it's horizontal and it can get a lot of dust down in the film. And this vertical system is, is what we like for a drive-in. My dad built all this. He didn't invent it. He just built it as something that somebody else invented. It's basically a homemade rig. The projector used to sit right up at the, like the lens would be right up here. But we had to move the projector back to make room for this transport. That's called a vertical transport. But the whole projector system used to sit closer to the window than it does now. In the old days, we didn't have this continuous lamp. This lamp makes the light continuously. And in the old days, there was a carbon arc lamp. And it was two carbon rods that were opposed to each other and had electric arc between them. And it would make the light. And the, the rods would burn. And the rods would only last about 20 minutes. So the film reel was designed last the length of the carbon. So the film reel set right here on this spindle right here. And when that film ran out, you had to switch to the, to the next reel be on the other projector. It's only had two projectors. So there's signals in the picture. But there's a signal in the upper right hand corner, a little dot. And when you see that dot, if you start the projector up, turn a, open the damper on the light. This is the damper open and close the light. You get that going, and then in three seconds, there's another signal, and when you see that one, you change the sound from one projector to the other, and you hit this switch right here. And it has a, an electric gate 
and it closes one projector and opens the other one, and you won't even see the picture change. It does it so fast. And, it, and like a real movie, you're going, to, you're going to switch back and forth eight times to the movie. And if you do it right, nobody ever notices. And I can't watch a movie on TV without seeing the signals because I used to run the projectors that way and I'm trying to see them. And I rarely miss a signal on an old movie on TV because they're all on there, on, on TV. Really? It, it, you just... You don't see them unless you know what you're looking for. It's just a dot that's up there for just a split second. And in three seconds more, there's another dot. And once you learn that, you don't forget it. So. I helped a little when I was 12. That's more in the way than anything. But I, I put out show bills with we go around and put show bills on cars and take them to stores. That was one of my jobs. And picking up the paper. And, uh, and when I got a little older, mowing. And, and I, I ran these projectors when I was a teenager. I can remember running the reel to reel. That's what you call it when you're switching them back and forth. Uh, I remember running reel to reel and building a model airplane over in the corner while I'm waiting for the next change. <laughs> I'm kind of semi-retired now. My main job now is uh, mostly book work. I, I do the, the buying and booking of the movies and the advertising and buy some of the supplies and order what needs to be shipped in. first movie we ever ran was double feature. It was The Pathfinder and King of the Congo. And the tickets were 50 cents for adults and children under 12 are free. They've always been children under 12 are free. We've never had any other price. Okay, the ticket was 50 cents and the tax on it was 15 cents out of the 50. So we realized 35 percent, uh, 35 cents out of the ticket, and we had to pay the film rental and the shipping and the utilities out of that 35 cents. <laughs> uh, now the tickets are five dollars, and when you take the tax out, it's 472, and then the film company, the, the film company gets basically about 50 percent of that for film rental. So we have. Two dollars and thirty something cents left to, to pay for the, the electric bill and the, the uh, shipping and advertising and labor to run it. So it's still a tough game. I've seen a lot of people come in here and asking me about they want to build a drive-in, and when you start explaining what the expenses are and how much you make out of it, most of them have a funny look on their face and they decide they don't want to run the drive-in. <laughs> so it's really hard to, to make a living at it. That's why there's not many of them left. My son John is running running at night. He's my manager now. So he's he stays here until the movie's over. And I, I just basically come out here and get something to eat and go home. So I don't stay out here at night. I'm out here in the daytime, but I'm out here at night. But, uh, Back when I was doing, I used to do Pam's job and John's job, plus what I do now. And I would get up at 10 in the morning and go to bed at about, usually around 2 in the morning. So you get up, you go to bed at 2 in the morning and get up at 10 in the same morning and go right back to work. So you get about eight hours off and the rest of it. And I'd, I'd come home in the afternoon and take a nap for maybe 15 minutes or at least at five minutes, 30 minutes was great. <laughs> Around 4.30 or 5, and get back up and go back to work. But I, that was uh, when I was younger. So I'm, I'm, uh, 
more. I need to retire a little bit more. I do, I do a little bit less every year. The drive-in used to hold, used to have 250 speakers. But when we expanded this building, we took out a few. So it's, I'm not sure how many speakers there are now. It's around 240, uh, maybe a little less than that. But we, we've installed radio sound that we didn't have in the past. And we'll transmit a signal that you can pick up with your car radio. And you can get the movie in stereo in your car. So you don't have to park at the speaker pole. So now we've had, last year we had one night, we had 430 cars in here in one night. I usually try to put the full sign up at 350. And I let, uh, 400 in here one time before and it was such a nightmare I swore I'd never do it again last year I bring my mom out when I know it's going to be real busy she likes to come out here with a lot of people mm. and uh, we were running Karate Kid on Saturday night and I thought well, it'll be a big crowd so I went by and I said you want to go see the drive-in sure she jumped up we came out here and the line for the ticket booth was all the way up that hill on the highway past that cemetery. Wow. There was movement, but it was that long of a line. And I had, to, I had to drive on the left side of the road and get down here and put up the full sign. By the time I got the sign, there was 430 cars in here. Wow. And I, I didn't want that many in here, but they got in. <laughs> Once I knew a little kicking mule, his name was Simon Sleep. He'd back his ear with a dreamy eye, oh, how that mule could kick. He had the mule boogie with the boogie bee. There's been a little resurgence in drive-ins in the, in the last few years, but the problem is the digital technology they're putting out is not going to work good in drive-in until it gets improved. and is feasible, the drive-ins are in question. I remember in the 70s, the all theaters almost went out of business. Uh, that was before they invented the multiplex. All the theaters were just uh, one or two screens in the indoor theater. And uh, they'd forgotten how to make movies in the 70s. But uh, people like, uh, and they came out with uh, like Star Wars and Indiana Jones. That put people back to going to the movies. Sometimes we can do better with a movie that really didn't do much nationwide. And then some do. Like uh, we just had Transformer 3 last week and the week before. And it was one night on it was the biggest night we've had all year. But it was also one of the biggest movies nationwide. We've got uh, Harry Potter coming up, but it won't do it big here. It'll do pretty good. But most of the people that are Harry Potter fans have already seen it two or three times in the indoor theater. But we try to run family shows. Uh, I, I run, a G, I try to get a G. They don't make many anymore. Yeah. I run all the G's I can get. And I try to run a G first and then a, a, a PG-13 second. Watch this, watch this. We don't run any R's. If it's an R, I just don't even book it. As a matter of fact, I had one on my booking sheet uh, just recently that I didn't realize they changed the ratings to R, so I had to take it off my, my lineup and put something in place of it. Hmm. it a, the last R that we ran was uh, Passion of Christ. It's been three or four years ago. Uh, we charge five dollars for adults and kids under 12 are free and that's quite a bit cheaper than the indoor theater and our and we have better food here the main advantage is that you don't have anybody sitting right next to you that you don't know and, and won't shut up and if you want to talk to somebody that's with you you can talk and not bother somebody but, uh, that's the main advantage you have more privacy and and uh, 
the disadvantage is the weather is a factor here. I mean, if you're here and it's really hot and humid, you're not as comfortable as you are in air conditioning. When we first started, it was a family warranted. And then in the 70s, when they didn't make good movies, it wasn't family warranted. There's a lot of uh, R-rated or worse movies shown here to stay in business. That's when it came out with videotape and cable TV at home, and they just about put us out of business. But we've stuck it out and we changed our format to, to try to stay in business. And we, for, for about 10 years, we were in first run which means the day that they come out, we ran the first run movies. And in the last, uh, the last few years, we've switched to running old movies that are like six weeks old. We've run two movies, a double feature for five, for one ticket. So you get a double feature and two different movies. And it's and family oriented. So it's back to a family business again, like it was in the beginning. It's kind of come full circle. It almost died in the 70s. sold tickets and I worked in the concession stand some and uh, I didn't start running the jackers until 79 and uh, if it breaks this automatic switch and it shuts it off if it breaks in the projector but if it breaks down here at the bottom it can fill this whole room full of film <laughs> nightmare so I have to stay in here with you yeah I throw it out here on the floor and I get it taped together and I start that corner again and I feed it back on there Sometimes I'd have to shut the projector off if this room had filmed the floor and shut it off and get it back on there. And that's like 10 or 12,000 feet of film. I splash it all the time. I use super glue and, and magic, uh, clear tape, magic scotch tape. But when I'm in a hurry, I just stick it over a piece of masking tape and I mark it with a piece of tissue paper and then the next day I can come back to that break, see, and fix it. But it takes a little bit more time. Just if it breaks, I'm in a hurry to get it going, but I just stick it with it. We change one movie each weekend, so we we'll actually run one of them two two weeks. This is the second week for this Winnie the Pooh. So uh, Monday, I'll take it off the machine. The film comes in, I'll build that one back up. I just did this one, see, and this one will run two weeks. But that was okay. So each movie gets to run two weeks. Yeah. 
Welcome to the Cabra Drive-In. We hope you enjoy tonight's movie. Wow. <laughs> it doesn't cheese. Wheels getting the cheese. 
We put it in the back door and take it out the other side. That way we don't get in the way. Putting it in there. What's that? We're making soda pop. Soda pop? It's called syrup. You need boxes. Oh! You mix it with some water and make soda pop. See, here's the whole, whole thing. It's seven up. Oh! Oh, it'll, make, it'll make about 30 gallons of 7 up.